Lake Havasu, Arizona. Originally impounded in 1938 with the completion of Parker Dam on the Colorado River, the lake had its beginnings as a fishing mecca. With 19,000 surface acres and 45 miles of shoreline, it didn't take long for family boaters to discover the fun, sun, and good times on the Arizona-California border. Havasu soon earned its reputation as Arizona's Riviera. Some estimates now say that over three and a half million people visit Havasu each year. What we used to see on a holiday weekend back 15 years ago is what we see every Saturday now here. The, the holiday weekends for us aren't any busier, they just, we fill up the park that much sooner. I remember uh, way back when, like I said, a big holiday weekend, it was, yeah, we filled everything in the park and we, we started, you know, trying to fit them everywhere and this, this last few years, literally it's every weekend in the summertime from Memorial Day to Labor Day and sometimes past, we're full. So on a busy weekend, uh, assuming all the parking spaces fill out, which is routine, that's at least 700 boat launches per day. However, with people um, leaving for the day, that total number will go well up over 1,000 boat launches on a, on a holiday weekend day and sometimes in the vicinity of 1,300 boat launches in any given day. This increase in use stressed the boat facilities to the max, especially the boat docks. The previous existing docks had seen better days a couple years ago before when we started this process, I believe. They were starting to degrade in both uh, top surface was falling apart, the pilings themselves were being pushed over by the larger boats in the wave action, and they were just really not safe at that point. We've had instances where people put their legs through them, and they were just literally unsafe at that time. They were still usable, but they were designed for smaller watercraft when they were first put in, uh, what, 15 years ago? and watercraft in this town have literally doubles in size. Lake Havasu State Park, also known as Windsor Beach, is the largest and busiest launch ramp in Arizona and an economic powerhouse for local residents. Here in Lake Havasu City, Lake Havasu State Park is one of the few launch ramps we have for access to the lake, so obviously it's a very, very important access to our lake for all of our visitors. Our visitors come from California, from Phoenix, uh, Texas, New Mexico, you name it, and of course uh, our local residents use it as well. So again, having a uh, viable launch ramp is incredibly important to the local economy here in Lake Havasu City as well as the economy of Arizona. Windsor Beach is a complex comprised of three main launch areas, all of which had difficulty handling boat traffic safely or efficiently. A decision was made to redesign and replace the docks, but private monies were desired for federal match. Enter the Lake Havasu City Marine Association. Well, in September of 2008, I met Ron over on the North Docks. He was looking at some way to put a Band-Aid on these existing plastic docks because they were falling apart. And uh, he made me aware that there was a three-for-one federal grant that could be triggered but it had to be triggered by a non-federal agency. And he further told me that it would be really powerful if a private entity was able to generate the funds to start this process. And that if we were really successful, this grant could trigger other grants. So that stimulated us to think about doing a dock party. And so in November of 2008, we did our first infamous beer and brats party for the docks. And we were able to raise $17,000. So that triggered the three-for-one grant that started this whole process. Cheers! It struck a, a note with me that the average boater who may not have the $100,000 boat that has a simple fishing boat was showing up and digging into their pocket and coming out with five or ten dollars to put towards this project. Um, that really showed commitment on part of the community towards the project, which doesn't happen a, a lot in the projects that we do. So that was a unique aspect of this project and, and one that, that I'll always remember as being uh, very gratifying in, in seeing it through to the finished product. The final operational plan called for the three main launch areas to be renovated simultaneously. There are three main launch ramps at the park. Um, one of those did not have a launch ramp to accommodate uh, larger boats, uh, only uh, personal watercraft. The other two main launch areas had existing dock systems, but they were not in good shape. 
additional facet of the project was there's an overflow parking area that's approximately three quarters of a mile away from the launch ramps, uh, which posed a, a unique problem too of once you go and park your vehicle, then how do you get back to where your boat was launched three quarters of a mile away? So at that particular location, we were also going to be adding a courtesy dock to allow the boater to go down to where that parking area was and more directly access their tow vehicle drivers uh, for pickup and drop off. Well, one of the issues we identified at Windsor Beach was the potential uh, public safety hazard of two different kinds of boat traffic going on in the same area. Basically, folks that were launching and retrieving their boats were in the exact same area as people who were dropping off their tow vehicle passengers, and uh, that interaction wasn't safe. So our goal was to separate those two types of boat traffic apart from each other and hopefully not only make it safer for boaters, but also make the whole uh, boat traffic pattern there more efficient for the public. Um, in addition, the south ramp portion of the project was to extend that ramp. Uh, unfortunately, it, its original design wasn't uh, such that it would accommodate very large watercraft. So there was a large prop wash hole at the end of that ramp, and just overall it wasn't long enough to accommodate boats over 30 feet in length. So our project uh, included the extension of that launch ramp by an additional 24 feet to accommodate the larger watercraft. And when Ron says larger watercraft, he really means larger watercraft. We've got it set about 160 today, but you can you can dial it up to do probably more close to 170 out of the boat if you wanted to do it. But. Lake Havasu City is one of the biggest manufacturing centers for performance boats, I've been told, and I can see that almost every weekend. When I've been on the lake since uh, like 86, back then like a 21, 25 footer was king of the lake, and now the average pontoon size I believe is literally like 28 foot. The average, there's still a few 21 foot, but most of those are bass boats, which I do have a few of those on for the tournament weekends. However, the uh, family or performance boats that come on the water literally or anymore, the small ones are literally like 36 and they've gone all the way up to like 42 foot on average it seems like. They've just gotten bigger, more horsepower, more louder for certain. The Windsor launch ramp is able to launch the largest boats. Um, most of our launch ramps on the lake can't handle uh, the very large boats. So I say what's very large? Over 40 feet and some over 50 feet. For example, we'll have a 52-foot turbine boat here. Um, it will have to launch at Windsor. So the new docks will facilitate the ability to launch those boats, and of course the extension of the south ramp means that we have two ramps that could launch a 40-plus foot boat. A project this size doesn't happen overnight. In this case, the planning and permitting alone took around 18 months. There was a lot of permitting to be accomplished on this project uh, in terms of Clean Water Act, 404 permits, um, other NEPA compliance, uh, Section 7 consultations because there are two endangered fish in the surrounding water. Um, it, it took a lot. It took a lot to do it and at least seven different agencies were involved in the permitting process. Contractors were hired and the work began in earnest. Because of the larger boats, everything had to be oversized. Those six-inch pilings dwarfed the original ones. A lot of heavy equipment was used to install the new ramp extensions, and the race was on to get the docks built before Desert Storm 2010, one of the largest boating activities on the lake. This year, I think Jim will expect over 200 boats. They will come from several from the East Coast, Florida, Michigan. We'll see some of the top race boats in the country. Um, if, the, if the water is good, we have a low wind, we could see something approaching 200 miles an hour. It's truly the biggest event of its kind in the Western United States. As one might expect, a project of this magnitude doesn't happen without a few mishaps. Uh, shortly after completion of the south ramp dock uh, portion of our project, a large power boat that was tied up to the dock caught fire and ended up burning uh, severely and actually caused quite a bit of damage to the dock itself. And so part of our project became not only the original installation of that dock, but a, the repair of that dock as well. 
and again, under time constraints, um, basically just added a whole additional facet to our project. We're pleased to report that the damage was repaired before Desert Storm and the docks operated as designed. Now that the project's completed, um, it's, it's really uh, going to continue to be a work in progress because we'll still be doing stuff with state parks at this location. There's still things to accomplish. It'll be an effort in quality management to try to keep improving upon what we've already done. But now that the project's done and uh, the Desert Storm event has occurred and the docks passed with flying colors, everybody appreciated them, they held up really well, and they really did what they were supposed to do in, in not only making things safer for voters, but also making the whole process of getting on the water and off the water more efficient.